Father God, we just thank you this morning just for this opportunity to come and study the word of God with your people. We thank you, Father God, that through the word that we'll learn how to recognize and know your voice yeah. and declare when, and be able to recognize that you were leading us. Mm. You said to be led by the Spirit, Lord, and we thank you that through the word of God that we will learn to be sensitive as born again believers to the Spirit of God that's mm. on the inside of us. Yeah. We give you praise today, Father God. We thank you, and we give you glory. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 So we have been sharing with you on recognizing the voice of God. Has it been helping anybody? Amen. Amen. All right. So we want we, more than anything else. We want you to be helped. Amen. Amen. Uh, so, so go back with me to John chapter fourteen. John chapter fourteen, and we're going to look at verse number twenty-six. John fourteen, verse twenty-six. And this is the verse we kind of been building on in terms of understanding why Jesus Christ gave us the Spirit, why we have the Spirit of God on the inside of us. John chapter 14, verse 26, here's what it says. It says, however, the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything. He will remind you of everything that I've ever told you. So he does, the Spirit of God does two things. Number one, he teaches you everything. And number two, he reminds you of everything. Have you ever had a time when God told you something and you forgot it? But, it, but when he told you it was really good, but you didn't write it down? But the Spirit of God in His grace will bring it back to your remembrance down the road Amen. and uh, to give you a second chance to write it down. <laughs> Not do it. <laughs> Amen. And, uh, and so, you know, that's what He's there. He's there to remind us of the things that have been spoken to us. You know, each of us, you know, there are times in our lives when we, when God will begin to give you on the inside of you a sensing for something greater. Mm. Anybody ever had that happen? Mm -hmm. Where you just know you meant for more than what you're living in. Yes, and what the enemy wants to do, he wants to beat you to down, beat you down, and make you think that that is your lot in life, and you'll never be better. Amen. But you got to hold fast to what has had, what, the, what God has revealed to you, that there's something on the inside of you that is greater than where you are. Amen. Come on, amen. And so, and so here's, here's, a, here's a question I'm going to deal with today. And, and this is the question I was, a friend of mine was talking about. And, and the question is, is the word of God subjective? Is the word of God subjective? Because a lot of times people take, take the word of God as, it's not set. It's kind of like people have their own personal interpretation. Now, now the word sub subjective means, it means an opinion or view that arises out of one's perception based on one's own state and or experiences. That's subjective. So people think the word, the question was, are, is the word of God subjective? Now, when the person said it to me, I know the word is not subjective, but at the time, I really could not articulate how to kind of come back with that, even though I didn't agree with it when they said it. But I knew it wasn't right because my spirit man said, that ain't right. <laughs> you know, you ever had that happen? Mm -hmm. Well, somebody said, you know in your spirit, that ain't right, but you can't combat it because you really don't have enough information mm -hmm. at that point to, to combat that with the word. So, so I began, to, I, I just kind of started praying about it. I've been praying about it really for a while and just, you know, just kind of praying it. Is the word of God subjective? Which I don't, I know it's not in my spirit. I know it's not subjective. Mm -hmm. But how do you deal with people who, who see the word as being subjective? Or you hear the saying, that's your interpretation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That means it's subjective. Mm -hmm. And so I was really praying about it, kind of, you know, just kind of mulling around, kind of let it go. Well, the other day the Lord woke me up. <laughs> Probably about one one twenty five in the morning. I would look at the clock when he wakes me up that late. And uh, and I mean, it was very. He he spoke to me very clear, you know, very and was very firm about this. And this is what the Lord said to me. He said, "My word is not subjective. It is the carnality of the human intellect that is subjective. The word is filled with my commands, birthed out of the spirit of love." The word becomes subjective when men look to live out their own desires and they seek to justify their own perspectives. Mm -hmm. But the word of Jesus, God never gave us uh, suggestions. He always gives command. Look at John chapter, John chapter uh, 14, uh, verse 21. And look what it says here. This is what Jesus said. He said, whoever knows and obeys my commands is the person who loves me. So notice what he says, that whatever he says is a command. It's not a subject, su su suggestion. Uh, he said, those who love me will have my father's love, and I, too, will love them and show myself to them. Now, how does he do that? He does it by the Spirit. Amen. See, people look for this outward sign of God. No, God said that the, 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 the real sign is you Amen. and what I put in you as a born-again believer. 
And we're so busy looking for the external things that we allow the external things to define who God is rather than allowing the spirit of Christ that he gave us to teach us what? Everything. Mm -hmm. Amen. And we're looking for external things to explain God. And, with, and let me tell you this, external things cannot explain God. All right. They can't. You know why? Because, because life in, this, in the natural sense will present to you different experiences from different people. And people, because of their different experiences, will come to different conclusions. So you got people say, well, God don't heal everybody. Because, see, I pray and I see people sick. I say, they ain't going to do what not God's word is true. Amen. Mm -hmm. He healed us a long time ago, over 2,000 years ago, on, on the cross. Amen. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquity. Mm -hmm. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. Mm -hmm. And with his stripes, yeah. we oh, were healed. Amen. Peter saw it as a finished work. Now, he didn't specify we. Mm -hmm. If he doesn't specify we, we mean everybody. Amen. <laughs> But how do you how do you how do you, how does that verse become subjective when people look at that verse through the experiences of other people? Amen. But here, but Jesus gave you His Spirit so you can have your own personal relationship with the Father. So that the word being validated is not based on what someone else does. Because I say this all the time: you don't know what other people believe. In. Amen. I can only know what I'm believing. Come on, Hallelujah. And so, and so we don't deal with we don't deal with God based on the experiences of, of other people and not and not even our own sometimes. Because even our own experiences can be off. <laughs> but we go back to the Spirit of God who began to give us insight and revelation and began to explain things to us. And then when, when he explains something that doesn't match up with my natural experience, I gotta have enough wisdom to go back and believe what the Spirit said apart from what I experienced in the natural. Ooh, glory, praise the Lord. And people don't do that. Now listen, we live in a democratic society where everybody has a vote, right? Mm -hmm. The problem is, because we live in a democratic society in the natural, mm -hmm. we take that same democratic mindset and bring it over to the spiritual. Mm -hmm. But see, even though in the natural we are in a, as born-again believers, we are in a natural world, we are in a democratic nation. But in our spirits, we operate by a theocracy. Amen. Amen. Now, in our spirit, a theocracy, it means God ruled. Mm. Ooh, come on, amen. amen. So, so the word, that's, that's why the Bible says we are in the world, but we're not of the world. All right, all right. Because we have a theocracy going on inside of us where it is we are God ruled. Well, how is he ruling us? He rules by his spirit. Amen. So then now my, my thinking, listen, so then my, my thinking is based on what he says. My, my talking is based on what he says. My behavior is based on what he says. Come on, my decisions are based on what he says. So that I don't have an opinion. That's right. You, you ever been on church meeting with somebody stands and I got something to say. You need to sit down. You're going to mess up everything. You're going to mess it up. Because God don't want to hear what you got to say. All right. He really doesn't. I and mean, he, he's gracious to listen to you, but then they're going to still tell you what he's going to tell you. Amen. So, 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 so we can't operate democratically in the world and have this sub subjective attitude where the word, well, you know, everybody, I, I, listen, I don't care what anybody has to believe, I believe the word. Amen. Amen. And even when my external experiences don't seem like the word is working, I still declare by my spirit the word always works for him who works the word. Amen. <laughs> it does. And you, don't, and you don't change it because your experiences aren't pleasant. All right, See, there you go. You there stick you go. with God. Go. Whether, whether it looks like it's working or it doesn't look like, you still stick with what God said. Because Amen. at the Amen. end of the day, God will prove himself and be faithful Amen. to his word. Amen. Amen. Right. Amen. This is, I don't believe the Lord will give us commands, but then leave those commands up to, uh, leave those commands up to our own personal interpretation. Because that's what people do. Well, nah, that's just what you think. That's just what, that's your interpretation. No, I don't have an interpretation. I have what the Spirit of God reveals. Amen. Now, we, we understand that, that even though we operate by our Spirit and listen to the Spirit, we understand that the Spirit is still living in fallen flesh. And through that fallen flesh, before it gets to our mind, our minds can corrupt what the Spirit is trying to tell us. We understand that, right? Amen. But at the same time, that's why we have the word of the written word of God, which is a check and balance for what we hear in our spirits. Amen. Because the written word will never contradict the word he speaks to your spirit, and your spirit will never contradict the written word. Amen. 
Why does he give us the written word? So we can make sure we keep our minds in check. Come on, anyway, what did Romans, Romans, uh, Romans 12 once it says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercy of God, that you present your body as a living sacrifice. Amen. Holy and acceptable unto the Lord. Verse 2 says, And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by what? The renewing of your mind. So that you might prove what is that good and perfect and acceptable will of God. Mm -hmm. So how am I going to change my mind? I, it's, it can't be just with the written word. i got to connect to my spirit. Why? Because a lot of people intellectually know the word. They got right. degrees that they tell them they know. They got PhDs that say they know the word. They got doctors that say they know the word. But, but yet how they live contradicts what the word says. Mm -hmm. Though they can quote it to you, they can come on, amen, but they believe a lot of weird stuff yeah. that violates the word. What's going on? It's, it's, the word is still subjective. Uh -oh. No, listen, the word is not subjective. It's, it's commands. You know, I mean, God has never told me anything. And they say, well, don't what do you think about that? Had God ever given you a command? Say, well, I'm saying, well, what you, what you, how you feel about that? He don't ask you how you feel about it. He don't even care. Here's what I say. You love me, do what I say. Thank you, Lord. That's what Jesus said. If you love me, keep, you keep my commandments. What I mean. He didn't say you be trying. I'm trying. I'm trying. No. He said, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. Amen. And Jesus, so, so what is Jesus saying? I don't give suggestions. Hmm. And, and, and he said, I've never had God speak to me and confused me about what he was trying to say. I've never. In fact, when God speaks, everything becomes clear. Thank you, Lord. Everything, I mean, everything becomes clear when God speaks. But the question somebody asked is, is the, is the word of God subjective? Uh, no. The carnal mind of man is subjective, but the word is not subjective. The word is full of commands that are birthed out of the spirit of love. Come on, Amen. And here's the thing that we need to realize that when God speaks to us, He's speaking to us with the intent to bless us. Amen. Amen. Come on, amen. amen. He's speaking with the intent to, 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 to take us to another level. Uh oh. Yeah, but you know, that, that level go outside my, my denominational belief. <laughs> oh well. What you gonna believe? The word or your denomination? Mm. You gotta believe the word. Come on, amen. amen. I mean, people don't get it. I mean, I, <laughs> Even when I talk to people, and, they, and they, you know, they talk about, you know, when I kind of explain the church to them, I said, you know, I said, I teach my people to be believers. And they don't even get that. They mm -hmm. said, believe, yeah, I said, believer believes the word. And a believer believes the word within the confinements of the word. The, a believer does not believe the word within the confinements of his denomination. Mm -hmm. A believer believes the word within the confinements of the revelation that is revealed by God's spirit. Oh, there you go. And God's spirit will always take you outside your denomination. <laughs> And when you set up a boundary and say, this is as far as I'm going to go, God says, okay, you, you, what you're doing is you're cutting off the revelation that I can reveal. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And thus, you cut off the revelation that the Spirit of God can reveal to you, then you're, in essence, tuning yourself off to God's voice. Mm -hmm. Wow. Wow. Now listen to this. Uh, go to 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Yeah. See, Jesus gave us his Spirit so that we can know Everything. Everything. That we need to know. Now, everything don't mean you go walk around and be a head full of knowledge about everything. I mean, it, let's think of it. Everything that concerns your life, where the mm. will of God is concerned, He will reveal to you everything you need mm. to know to accomplish. In other words, there, it, how many of you are born again? Okay, let me tell you, give you a good little revelation. If you're born again and God tells you to do something and it looks like it's beyond you, don't worry about it. Just do what he says because there's something greater, someone great on the inside of you that gives you the ability as you go to perform that which everybody saying the natural is impossible for you to do. That's what about it. You can do all things through Christ who strengthens you what? by his spirit. Amen. It doesn't say you can do all things through your doctrine. <laughs> right? It doesn't say that. It doesn't say you can do all things through your education. No. It says you can do all things through Christ. Amen. That's the word. That's the word. And now, when I say that, and when I say here's what people always say. When I say that, everything, are oh, you down on education? I'm not down on education. I absolutely believe in education. I don't, we shouldn't have no illiterate children running around here. Amen. <laughs> Come on, amen. You need to know how to read to get a job, right? <laughs> Can't fill out an application. Nothing wrong with having a doctorate. Nothing wrong with having a master's. Nothing wrong with having any of that stuff. But what I'm saying is all school can do is give you information about God. Amen. Revelation only comes by the Spirit. 
So that's why the dude who don't go to school can get more revelation than, than the person who go to school. Because the person who go to school depends on the school to get everything. Amen. The person who don't go to school depends on the Spirit of God to give them everything. The one that come out of school acts nutty. Believes nutty. Now, not all schools are bad. There's some good schools, there's some bad schools. All right, so don't say that. But I don't want anybody saying, pass it down on education. He, he don't believe in education. We need to be an educated black people. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Because <laughs> we push that on our kids, don't we? What's better, educated or walking with God? I'm just saying. So I'm not against education. In fact, I'm going to go back to school, praise the Lord. Uh, but I'm not going to school for any type of validation. All right. I'm going for the structure. I need some structure in my study of the word. Amen. But I'm not going, this. I don't expect school to give me revelation. Amen. I expect school to give me information. Right. It's the spirit of God that will bring the revelation. Only. That's right, amen. Can't get it in though. No. You can't, you can't, your doctor does not say you're in, you're, you have revelation. It, it doesn't. It just says you went to school and got some information. But that don't mean all the information you got was right. Right. But nothing wrong with it. I, you know, I, 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 hey, I will send people to school. They need it. <coughs> but I always tell them, don't go to school expecting to get revelation. Mm -hmm. You go get the information and let the Spirit of God bring the revelation. All right. Amen. Amen. And I've seen people do better who had little mm -hmm. than people who had much. Because mm -hmm. they had revelation. God never called, listen, God never called educated people. Mm -hmm. <laughs> called the dumb folk. The unlearned and the uneducated. That's, what, that's all the disciples. You know the only educated dude among the disciples? No, guess which one it was? It was Judas. Judas, Judas was the only educated dude amongst the most of them, and he's the one that betrayed him. The smart dude betrayed him. But the, the Bible said the rest of them were unlearned and uneducated. And yet the Bible said the, the people took note of them that they had been with the Lord. Why? Because they had, they had an anointing to influence and change people's lives. All right, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 7. You there? Mm -hmm. If you're not, we're going to pray for you. <laughs> no, I'm just teasing. But verse 7 said this. We speak about the mystery of God's wisdom. It is a wisdom that has been hidden, which God had planned for our glory before the world began. Mm -hmm. Not one of the rulers of this world has known it. Mm -hmm. Think about it. Now, look, now, I'm reading from the God Words translation. It says, not one of the rulers of this world had known it. If they had, they wouldn't have crucified the Lord of glory. But as the scripture says, no eye has seen, no ear has heard, and no mind has imagined the things that God has prepared for those who love him. Now, how many people still, still quote that, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, God has prepared things. You can't even understand. But look what he says here. Look at the very next verse. But God has revealed those things to us by what? His spirit. His spirit. Now, where is his spirit at? In us, as born again believers. The first thing Jesus gave, told his disciples, I'm going to send you another helper. And he's going to tell you what? Everything. Wow. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> and listen to this. Uh, the Greek says, the Spirit searches everything, especially the deep things of God. So, so, so listen, here's what I realize, y'all, and, and, and love me when I say this. My study never revealed the deep things. You know what revealed the deep things from the Word of God to me? Spending time in his presence. Uh -oh. amen, amen. See, I, I thought, man, if I just study enough, get enough information, it's going to give me insight about God. And God says, another way you'll get information about me and revelation about me is you spend time with me. Amen. We want revelation about God, but we don't want to spend time with God. We want his revelation, but we don't want to walk with him. But I found that as I walk with him, his revelation came. Mm -hmm. Insight came. I mean, waking me up 125 in the morning, giving me insight about stuff. And I'm not saying, again, I'm not, I mean, listen, you can be sitting in a, in a classroom setting, and somebody can be sharing something from the Word, and the Spirit of God can get on that Word and give you revelation while you're wow. sitting in the classroom. Yes. Yes. But I'm saying, that's why Jesus said, you have need that no man teach you. Why? Because even as the Word of God is going forth, the Spirit of God is the one who's going to bring insight and revelation of that Word into your life. Say that, Say that. So really what you need to do and put yourself in a position to hear the word. Uh, uh -huh. what, what do you think church is all about? Mm -hmm. this, is, this is school. Mm -hmm. This is when you get your education. Mm -hmm. Amen. I mean, I, my goal is to give you information about the word, but here's why I trust him. I trust that as I'm giving you information, the spirit of God working along with me will give you revelation. Mm -hmm. 
Now, I, and I've never had somebody, somebody who, said, who, who came to me and said, Pastor, that was a really good word, but can you show me your degree to show me that you're qualified to teach that? Hmm. Why? Because really, when the Spirit of God gives it to you, that's all that matters. And you don't care if it came from Joe Blow or Susie, Susie New, do, do that. As long as you get revelation that help you live every day. Oh, that's all. This, this is. When you get something that you can take out into everyday life and apply and see it working, that's the only thing that matters. Mm. I, I don't, you know, listen, think about, see, that's the world's way of thinking. That's a world way, the way we, where people think, well, you can't tell me because you're not educated enough to tell me anything. Say that. Really? Say that. So you think, man, think about this, y'all. You take a person that went to school, let's say, for, for four years, got a, a doctorate theology in Christian, whatever. But you take a person that's been sitting in the church for 18 years faithfully, taking notes, spending time in the Word, being faithful, serving in the church for years, and you think they won't get the same degree of revelation in 16 years? Come on, man, amen. Again, like, you know, it's so funny because, see, when I was at a Webster and, and God called me to the ministry, one of the things I guess people were kind of upset about because he wouldn't ordain me. And it's like, well, I really, you know, he licensed me to preach the word, but he didn't ordain me. And one of the reasons was that he said, Don, he said, I really want you to go to school. And, and, you know, well, he wanted me to go to seminary. Well, the seminary he wanted me to go to, I'm like, I ain't going over there because it's crazy. <laughs> I mean, seriously, I mean, I knew it was bad. I mean, because I, I met the guys that were coming out of there and the things that they were believing. And so I was like, well, I was, and, and, the, and so when I went back and prayed about it, the Lord says, Donald, I don't want you to go to school. <laughs> I was like, so I told Pastor, Pastor, I, no, I respect, you know, the fact that you want me to go, but I can't go because God said don't go. And so I was like, you know, so, so I, I let it go. Well, you know, probably that was in 80, that was in 89, 89 or 90, when I started ministering the Word. And so here I am, now I will say probably, I left there and went to faith of their victory. I didn't get ordained until probably 12, 13 years later. <laughs> By Pastor Calvin. And uh, because I realized this, if God wanted me to have it, he going to put me in a position to get it. And so all those years, and listen, and when I went to faith of their victory, the Lord told, what the Lord told me to do, listen, he told me to go in there and sit down. And told me this, I sat for about three years and didn't do nothing but Learn the word. And I, I took notes like, y'all see my notes, my stack of notes. I, st I, stack, I still take notes. I mean, there's stacks of notes of things that I was learning. And I treated church like school. Now, they didn't give me a degree and a plaque for showing up, but I treated it like school. I went home and did my studies. I went down with the Spirit of God, got in the Word of God, broke it down, got my Hebrew, Greek, you know, the Strong's Concordance. I mean, I was studying for, for the word. Why? Because I wanted to be equipped. But nobody gives you, but you know, the Holy Ghost don't give you a certificate for that. <laughs> you don't get a certificate for it. But, but so after all those years, five years ago, I, I'm just minding my own business, this kind of fellowship with God. And the Lord says, Don, you can go to school now if you want to. I said, I don't want to go. You go now. You know, why? But then, I, but then, you know, but then, you know, just this year, I said, you know, I really would like to go back to school. You know, and just, but see, I had to wait on God's approval because we're to be led by the Spirit, not just by people telling us to do so. I can't, for instance, I can't make you do stuff, you, you know, if God's not telling you to do it. If you get a, if I say do something, but you get a check in your spirit that that's not what you're supposed to be doing, you, you have, you, you got to have enough courage to say, I, I just really feel like I'm going to be doing it. And people are scared to do that. I got to do what Pastor asked me to. Well, you know, <laughs> if you ain't called to do it, you're going to mess it up anyway. So I'm not even going to jump in. But here's, what, here's what I, but listen, but here's what I live, realized about the Holy Ghost. Remember what, he, what Jesus said in, in John 14, 26. However, the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything. So then, so, so then when I came in here, y'all, guess what? There were things that God began to speak to me about people. Like, this person needs to do this, this person needs to do that. And every by the time I approach somebody about doing something, they did it. And they do it well. Why? Because I'm led by the spirit. All right. I'm not just making this because, oh, well, you know, I would like to hire you for this position, but you no, know, I need to see your degree. <laughs> you, that's how the world operates. That is not how the church is supposed to operate. Because how many of you ever got a position you wouldn't qualify for? Because of the favor of God. <laughs> and sometimes you got to trust God to get, get to the place where he wants you to be. And not the word back. Now, and again, I'm not saying, let me keep reading. I'm not saying you can't get a master's doctorate back. I'm not saying that at all. There's nothing wrong with that stuff. 
but don't put your confidence in, confidence in it. Amen. The Bible says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. And lean not to your own understanding. But in all your ways acknowledge, that word acknowledge means to be familiar with him, and he shall direct your path. So, so, so I, I, again, I hate to say it like that, but I hate that because I hate people saying, well, you're just against it. No, I'm not against it. Get all you can, but don't put your confidence in it. Amen. Because God can use your education to get you in doors that you may not necessarily could get in without it. Because the world is natural. They will look at a degree. But here's the thing. You still need to be led by the Spirit because, because if you're led by the Spirit, God can get you in any door without the education. Amen. That's someone. Listen, when I got my, when I got that manager job at, at, at uh, Bell South, I was not qualified. And there were people who went through four, five, six years of school. I didn't go through none. And they were highly upset at the fact that I got favor for a job that I was not qualified to get. Why? Because I, because the Lord led me to get the job. And then when he led, he said, "I want you to be a man. I don't want to be a manager." He said, "I really don't." You know, he said, "I need you to be a manager." I said, "Okay, I fine. I'll be a manager." I said, but if you want me to be a manager, then this is what you need to do. And I told the Lord, I said, I want the president of the company to want me because if he wants me, can't nobody argue with him. Mm -hmm. And then it ended up, you know, I ended up getting the position. President came to town. I said this, told this story tons of times. But he came to town, took me out to lunch that night, and said, I just want you to know I'm the one that wanted you for this position. Praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. well, but, but how could I get it? Because the Lord led me to it. All right. When I became a pastor, I had no intentions of becoming a pastor. Didn't even think about becoming a pastor. I was very content mm -hmm. preaching the word of God, going to nursing homes and jails. and I was having a dandy time doing what I was doing. And all along, God sent me to Webster. And then he said, look. I mean, now this, the first time I met Pastor... Uh, no, Walk, Pastor. The last one. Walker. Walker, Walker right? Walker. Reverend Walker, yeah. I like him. I mean, I really like I like this guy. Because he wanted me to meet their new pastor. I was like, that's fine. Let me meet him. That's a pleasure. And so he's, he's listening. I'm like, tell how God set you up when, he, when you're led by the Spirit. I walked in his office and he was talking to me. He said, son, he said, has God, has, has, have you considered pastoring? I said, no, sir. It's not, not on my agenda. I said, God ain't told me to do it. And I, I don't intend to do it unless he tells me to. <laughs> he went, oh, okay. He said, I tell you what, can you come back and preach on three days on prayer? For three days? I said, sure. I'd be good, more than glad to do it. Be, be more than honored to come back. Really, again, really liked him. I'm telling you, it was a setup. I get home and go, go home, and I, I go in my prayer closet to pray. Uh, not in the litter, litter closet, just the room. And, uh, but I'm praying. I said, Lord, what do you want me to share about prayer? And the first thing the Holy Ghost said to me, he said, Donald, he won't be there much longer. Mm -hmm. And when he's gone, he said, I want you to pastor these people. Mm -hmm. I said, fine. That's, that's, you want me to? Hey, have at it. I said, but here's the deal. I'm not going after it. If you want me to do it, you, you, you do it. And I didn't go after it at all. In fact, I, I told, you know, then he called me. I think he called me later on after I did it three days. He called me, what, about two, three months later. And, you know, he said, we've been looking for you. I'm like, well, I've been in the same spot I've always been in. I ain't changed anything. And uh, found out about Pastor Walker. And, and, and the Lord, and, but I'm telling you, it was a setup. Now, now I'm not saying God did that to Pastor Walker. Say that. Amen. Because I know what folks are saying. Amen. Because <laughs> <Amen. laughs> he, he said God did. No, that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying God, because he knows the end from the beginning. That's right. He knows, yeah. he knows, that's right. He knows that's right. how to position that's right. you for what he wants you to be. That's right. All right. He knows how to position you. Like, he's like, okay, this person's going to fall out. I need to fall, fall you right in that place. So he knows how to do that. So I'm not saying God, yeah, this four nine. So I'm, don't be saying, that's the said nine. That's not what I'm saying. God knows how folks do, boy. <laughs> They go on the deep end. <laughs> but, but, you know, again, like, and mind you, I really kind of forgot what, when the Lord told me in prayer, I wrote it down, I put it in my book, I dated it. And I forgot all about it. Mm -hmm. So when I came to Web Webster, I really had, hadn't come in with the intent to be anybody's pastor. I just said, you know, he was telling me, well, we're trying to get somebody to come in every week. I said, man, that's not a good idea. I said, you having somebody come in here different every week is just bad for people. Because people don't grow because you just, you know, get something different every week. I said, I'm willing to come and, you know, to kind of fill in. And I, mind you, I'm not even thinking about being pastor. I forgot all about it. <laughs> and, uh, and, and God got me in there. I was in terms for about, about six months into it. That's when the Lord reminded me. I told you this is what I've called you to do. I said, okay, well, I'm not saying anything. Keep my mouth. I think I told Deke was the only person I told. I said, man, this is what the Lord told me. I said, but we ain't saying nothing. We ain't we leaving alone. I ain't putting my hand on about say I finagled my way here at all. I did. And, uh. And then they end up deciding to, to let me be pastor after a, a year. But all that was God, being led by the Spirit of God. Right. I didn't have to finagle anybody. I didn't have to try to get good in with somebody, Say be somebody's friend. You know, I, 
You know, I mean, and, and the thing was, in the middle of all that, another church was asking me about pastoring. And they said, well, we would need to see your resume. No, I don't do resumes. <laughs> I guess I don't do resumes, not, not for pastorings. Because that Bible says, whom the Lord calls, he qualifies. Oh, Amen. Right. If, I ain't call, if my calling isn't qualified, you don't need me. Because you, you can get to do that look good on paper. And you give him that position, he'd be hell to that church. So you don't go by, you, don't, you, can't, you can't go by what they look like on paper. The devil look good on paper. Mm -hmm. All right, praise the Lord. All right, okay, where did I stop? Okay, verse, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 10. It says, God has revealed those things by his spirit. The spirit searches everything, especially the deep things of God. After all, who knows everything about a person except that person's own spirit? In the same way, no one has known everything about God except God's spirit. So if this, now let's think about this, y'all. If God's spirit knows everything about God, and that spirit is living on the inside of you, do you not now have the capacity to access everything you need to know because the spirit who knows everything, who knows God, lives on the inside of you? So guess what? I can know anything I need to know because the spirit of God is on the inside of me. And you can know whatever you need to know because the spirit of God is on the inside of you because he knows everything. Look at that. That's good news, boy. That's good news right there. See, because some of y'all ain't doing stuff because you don't think you're qualified. But you know, you don't think you're smart enough. No, you don't be smart enough. You don't have to be qualified. You got the one who's qualified and smart enough living on the inside of you. He's called your helper. <laughs> he is. Look, he says here. It says, verse 12. Now, we didn't receive the spirit that belongs to the world. So now, now, think about it. If we didn't receive the spirit that belongs to the world, then why are we trying to operate the way the world operates? Why can't we try to hire people on the basis of how the world goes? Or the world says you need a resume. Well, we'll get a resume too. Get yourself in all kind of trouble doing that stuff. Mm -hmm. I heard a church say one time, we want, we want an educated pastor. <laughs> they did. He got an educated pastor and he took them for everything he had and left them in debt. Mm -hmm. I'm, see, I'm, this, nobody, this is not true, nobody is more amazed about the things we accomplish than I am. Mm -hmm. I'll mean, be honest with you, I sometimes had this giggle. I said, boy, you, you gotta be God. <laughs> I am not the smartest person in the world. I am not the brightest person. I am not the most educated person. But I know how to obey God. Amen. And I, I am always amazed how smart God is. I mean, somebody asked me one time, they said, no, now that you've been a pastor for a year and a half, two years, are there any decisions you regret making? I was like, uh, no, because I don't make none. I just do what God tells me to do. I mean, I really not just do what God If God says don't do it, I don't do it. If he says do it, I do it. And I mean, to me, that's, you know, that, that's either it's his, it's his church. You're his sheep. I think he know how to lead you. I just need to follow one that's leading all of us. Amen. And this is now verse twelve. It says, "Now we didn't receive the spirit that belongs to the world. Instead, we received the spirit who comes from God, so that we could know the things which God has what freely given us." Wow. But yet, religion tells us we got to earn it. Mm -hmm. Religion tells you gotta earn that healing. You gotta pray and fast long enough. You didn't pray fast and long enough. You didn't pray long enough. You didn't fast long enough. You didn't you didn't shout long enough. You didn't didn't know you didn't study long enough. He said, "No, you can know the things that are freely given." Well, how do I know the things that are freely given? Because it's always by the Spirit. Amen, amen. That's when we know in that person's life that the word is subjective when they don't believe the things that are freely given. Mm -hmm. Healing is it's free. Thank you, Jesus. It's free. Jesus. You know, you know, we sing that song, Jesus paid it all, right? But then when, when people say, well, you know, God don't heal everybody. <laughs> Hold up, you just saying Jesus paid it all. If he paid it all, then, then that means all is all. But he said that we might know the things that were freely given to us. Mm. But let me tell you the, thing, the, 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 the one thing free things do cost you. Let me tell you, here's what it costs you. It costs you a willingness to believe. And a lot of things that are free by God, the reason why people don't get them, because they don't believe it. Mm. That's right. That's right. You've hit for $10 million. Uh, I just don't believe it. Well, okay, fine, we'll give it to somebody else. Because <laughs> you don't want to believe it. What the worst is, all things are possible to him who believes. All God has asked you to do is just believe me. Mm. Just take me at my word. Mm. Trust in the Lord with all your heart mm. and lean not to your own understanding. Mm. I don't understand how this is going to work out, guys. I don't need you to understand how. I need you to trust me. I don't need you to figure it out. I've already figured it out. I just need you to trust me. And that's difficult sometimes because we want, we want to be comfortable, don't we? 
But see, it, again, if we don't learn how to get in tune with God's spirit and, and, and be led by the spirit of God, there's a whole lot of things we're going to miss in our lives. Mm. Amen. But we don't, I don't, want, I don't know about you, but I don't want to miss nothing. I didn't come this far to quit. Amen. And I didn't come this far to, to end up short. I'm getting everything that God says is rightfully mine. Amen. Mm. You say, well, how you want? I say, I ain't going to preach my stuff. No, I, I want it so I can be a blessing. I can't bless somebody with a car if all I got in my one is barely making it. Isn't that the truth? I can't, I can't bless somebody financially if all, all I do is got enough money just barely enough to make pay my own bills. Come on. I got to believe God for more. Amen. To, be a, to be a blessing. Amen. The Bible says it's God who, who, who gives us the power to get wealth that we might what? Establish his covenant. He didn't say so we can go buy the biggest house. Amen. He said so we might establish his covenant in the earth. Amen. I mean, this world system does work on money. You know, anybody went to the grocery store and paid for your grocery with a good, good feeling? <laughs> I don't think they did. Nobody, they say, you feel good, you can have those groceries. Hell no, nah, they say, oh, we want some money. Right? Come on, man. This world operates on a money system. So you need some money to do some things. Amen? Nope. Anybody living in their house for free? <laughs> oh, wouldn't it be nice? But now it costs something to live there, amen. All right, so let me, let me go back to verse 13. Uh, it says, First uh, Corinthians 2, chapter 2, verse 13, says, We don't speak about these things using teachings that are based on intellectual arguments like people do. Mm -hmm. So we don't use our intellect. Mm -hmm. We don't go by our intellectual, homiletical, theological views. We go by, we be what? Led by the Spirit. Mm -hmm. uh, listen, instead, listen, we use the Spirit's teachings. Mm -hmm. So we're not using our own teaching. We're not, we're not, we're not, that's why see, when, when Jesus said, you have need that no man teach you, what he is saying is you don't need men standing up in their homiletical theological mindsets trying to tell you stuff from the word that they themselves have not got revelation about. Mm. Right. You need somebody to start with some revelation from by the Spirit of God to give you insight and revelation. Say amen. So you can apply that to your life and then you will see the results of that revelation as you put it into practice. Amen. The apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher gift are called by God. Those are callings from the Lord. Mm. Ministry is a calling, not a profession. Mm. See, in a profession, you can retire. Say that. In a calling, you just die. Amen. <laughs> and, and how many, I, I've listened to pastors, well, I think I'm going to retire from this ministry thing. Mm. Are you nuts? Mm. The only way I'm going to quit is if I'm dead. Come on. I'm telling you, I'm not going to put it up there. You say, well, 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 what if you are a paraplegic from the neck down? You roll me out in a wheelchair and give me a mic. I'll go at it. <laughs> I mean, seriously. You don't, this is not a profession. Come on. We're not looking for a retirement plan. <coughs> no, we're trying to find the will of God and touch the lives of people so people can look more like Jesus. Yes, yes, yes. You don't retire from a calling. Do you see anybody in the Bible who God called, did you see any of them retire? Say no, they all died. Mm -hmm. That was the retirement plan. <laughs> there you go. The retirement, we die. When I die, that's when I'm, I'm, I'm retired. But not until then. That's the one that I respect by Reverend Coverdale. That man oh, didn't retire. He did not that. retire, praise God. He say kept that. preaching to the very end. Say that. Amen. That's what you're supposed to, you're supposed to just keep going to the end, to this old, to, to God says, to God calls you home. Mm -hmm. But see, people look at, people look at, people look at those five folks as jobs now. Jobs and they want the what kind of salary are you gonna pay me? I've got a lot of education. You need to pay me a little more money. Yeah, right. That's what that's the person he's sending right back at that dub because he don't care nothing about no sheep. He's looking for a four one k plan. He's looking for a retirement plan. Who go pay for my house? Who go pay for my car? Hit the road, Jack, and don't you come back no more, no more. <laughs> Isn't that really a lot of what goes on in church today? Everybody looking for retirement plans of what you go give me. Let me tell you something. If God calls you to something, it becomes his responsibility to take care of you. Amen. And the Bible does say that the people should take care of the men of God and all that. But, but when we start making that the criteria for whether or not we take, take the position, that's wrong. We take the position because God says so. If they don't give you nothing but a piece of chocolate cake, you do what you call to do by God. And God will reward you. Come on, amen. Am I helping anybody? That's right. Amen. Amen. Now listen to this. Verse, uh, verse 14. Uh, verse 13 says, We don't speak the, about these things using teaching that are based on intellectual arguments like people do. Instead, we use the Spirit's teaching. 
We explain spiritual things to those who have the spirit. So you don't even try to preach this to an unsaved person. They ain't going to get it. All right. Preach this to y'all. Why? Because you have the spirit of God on the inside of you that can give you revelation about what I'm saying. So you don't walk away saying, well, pastor said, pastor said, pastor said, pastor said. Uh, hold up now. I don't want to be in that position. No, you need to, you need to let the Holy Ghost reveal things to you. So when you speak it to people, it, it comes up with power and dominion because you got a revelation about it. Amen. Right. You, can, you, can't, you can't preach. You can't tell somebody about tithing when all it is, but Pastor Donald said we need to tithe. No, no, no. You need to get a revelation about it. You need to walk in it for a while. Amen. You need to see the results of it in your life. Then when you tell a person, man, tithing is good, when you see the benefits of it, of it working in your life, Amen. then it carries weight. You know, you know the biggest turn off the people? When we start quoting what Bishop so and so said. <laughs> My pastor said. But you need to get your own revelation. Mm. So it becomes your revelation. Mm. I just believe the word of God. I believe what the Lord said. And I, and I, I'm not saying I'm quote, I quote Pastor Cowan sometimes. But mm. it's always with, with, with the revelation I already have about it. Amen. Amen. All right, look at this. Look at verse 14. It says, A person who isn't spiritual doesn't accept the teachings of God's spirit. He thinks they're nonsense. Mm. So why waste your time trying to explain spiritual things to carnal people? Amen. You know what carnal people understand? They understand carnal stuff. So they need to see you blessed. Amen. They need to see you happy. Right. Yeah. Come on, man. You can't be walking around with the bubble hanging out the car forever. <laughs> if you say you're serving God, at some point there I see you right. rising up in God. Amen. Yeah. And that's why I don't get, you know, if, if men, listen, most, and again, we know there are some bad men of God out there. Bad, we know there are some bad pastors, we know that. But there are some who are really genuinely good, who love God who started out making absolutely nothing, was preaching because they just love people. Mm -hmm. And then they began to prosper, and God prospered, and they prospered the right way because mm -hmm. God began to bless them. Amen. Amen. Now, now we, 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 we need to be able to look at people like that and say, this is the evidence, of, 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 <coughs> this is the fruit of my faithfulness. Mm -hmm. Amen. Should get mad how Pastor walk in with a new suit. The man been wearing the same suit for five years. You ought to be glad to get a new suit. <laughs> <laughs> come on, amen. Come on, amen. 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 You ought to be glad that he's prospering. Why? Because as he prospers, you prosper. Amen. Amen. How many of you know it always starts with the head? Amen. How many of you know there's nobody more prosperous than God? Amen. And then Jesus was prospered. Mm -hmm. And then we were adopted into the family and we were made joined with Jesus. That means we prospered too. All right. All right. So shouldn't they see a level of prosperity going on in your life as you serve the Lord? Now we're not talking about finagling people either. We're not talking about setting this outrageous salary because you know you got 12 people and you said this salary is outrageously high. Just because you want to look the part. Listen, I don't want to look the part. I want to be the part. Amen. In other words, if I'm looking good, I want my bank account to reflect I'm looking good in that I'm debt free. I'm not on nobody. How many churches, man, are deep in debt but they still Straight look up. good? Right. No, I'm not, may that never be said of us. I mean, may that never be said of us that, that we have all this exterior that looks good but then we owe the bank everything. That's not, that's, I don't think that's, I think that's a false sense of prosperity. Amen. Now I think when you, when you owe, the Bible says, owe no man nothing but the love. Mm -hmm. That's prospering right there. Mm -hmm. Like Jesse Duplantis, he said, when the bank calls you, it want to take you out to lunch. Mm -hmm. <laughs> come on, hey man, he said, then you set your own price to the bank. Mm -hmm. That's when you're prospering, when they come looking for you. Mm -hmm. See, a lot of this stuff is like, uh, it's a facade. It's not real prospering. See, sometimes you got to keep it. You got to keep it at a low level for a while, and then let your income rise up, and then live within that income. Mm -hmm. And you might have to stay like that for a while, but once you hit the top, but buddy, I tell you, you do it the right way. God always makes sure you stay there. Amen. Mm. I don't think Jesus will ever come down again. Me. <laughs> come on, amen. amen. <laughs> His name, David got up, never went down again. All right, look at this. Uh, the word is designed to get you out of your perception and allow you to see life from the Father's perception. Mm -hmm. That's why you need revelation about the word, mm -hmm. so that you can see the Father's perspective. I hear, I hear people quote the word to me. They go, eh, I know the Bible says that we give, he give back up, but I don't understand why it's not working my life. <laughs> you don't even believe what you're doing then. See, sometimes you've got to say the right thing when, you feel at, when, you, when, you, when you're at your worst time emotionally. That's the real, see, that's the real, that's the real evidence of the depth of your belief. Everybody can go, ooh, life is good when everything's green. Mm -hmm. Sky is blue and the sun is shining. Mm -hmm. 
But can you go, ooh, praise the Lord, everything's Lord, good. When when, go. when the skies are raining down, thunderstorms on you, and the, the ground, the grass is all dead, and the trees are not producing anything, can you still say, but God is good? Say that. Ah, say that. Ah, say He's still faithful to me, amen. That's why the Bible says a righteous man falls seven times, but he always gets back up. Why? Because the only thing that gets him back up is that he knows that there's something better. And you gotta always know God always got something better for you. But you go but you go through things sometimes. Amen. But God's got better. Listen. Alright, listen. Bible school is designed to give you information. That information can become revelation if you're if you're led by the Spirit. A degree alone does not mean you have revelation of the word. It doesn't. It just you know it means you got a lot of information. Amen. But the information you have may not be correct. Right. Remember that the info information you get in school could be wrong. But if you're led by the Spirit, He will reveal even that to you. Mm. See, I see why God didn't want me to go to school. Because I, I was wanting to go to school for all the wrong reasons. Mm. Can I tell on myself? <laughs> see, I, I, knew, I knew how carnal people are. And in order to be accepted by them, I, I wanted to go to school to get my paper that says I had this doctorate in whatever I was going to take. And I really didn't want it for any other reason other than to impress people. And God, he said, boy, if you go to school like that, they're going to teach you anything. You ain't going to care. You just take it all. You'll suck it off just so you can get a piece of paper that says you qualify. He's already qualified you. Mm -hmm. And so, I, so he told me not to go. I, I know why he didn't want me to go because I had I had some issues. Now if I go to school, I don't even care about the paper. I just am going because I need the information mm -hmm. and I need the structure for a while. But it took, it took, me, it took me 13 years to get to that point. Isn't that amazing? Amen. But, but I'm glad he did it that way. You know why? Because the mm. things I teach you guys didn't Man. come out of somebody else's, somebody else's commentary. It didn't, it didn't come out of somebody else's revelation. Right. I'm not quoting what Pastor Cowan said. What Pastor Cowan said. Pastor Cowan told me this and Pastor Cowan told me this. Mm. You, you, when I give it to you, it comes right out of my heart because I had to live this stuff. Amen. Amen. And I always give you line upon line, precept upon precept. I don't need to be one verse and just run with it. I give you a whole bunch of stuff. Mm. Oh, Y'all doing okay? I know I'm going kind of long, but right, we won't be here next week. Right. <laughs> so listen to this. Uh, uh, Bible, school does, listen, Bible school does not make you qualified to <coughs> preach and teach the word. It doesn't. What makes you qualified is the call of God. Amen. The whom the Lord calls, he qualifies. You have to be called. You cannot be you can, you, he'll, he'll call you to do something. And you know what the evidence of? You will begin to see the results of how it affects people's lives. And here's another thing God do. You start seeing doors opening for you. Mm -hmm. Amen. Right. Mm. You won't even be looking for doors. Doors start opening up for you. I mean, I was, hor I was horrible when I first started out. I mean, I was. I was like, oh, God. <laughs> but you know what? He kept opening up doors for me. All right. Sending me to places to preach the word. Now, I ain't going to say this. It was horrible. But I didn't like myself. Okay? At that time, you know, I didn't really like what I was, you know. I was growing, you know. Now you stood across the, the words and mm -hmm. you amen. I, I went, on one sermon, I said amen so much, I got on my own nerves. <laughs> <laughs> I did get on my own nerves. I was like, oh my God, how many times am I going to say amen? Every other word was an amen. <laughs> but I, I said, Lord, you're going to change it. You're going to have to change it because this is who I am. And you got to change it. And he did. He began to kind of slowly weed it out of my life to where I don't say amen all the time now. <laughs> amen. <laughs> Help a brother out. <laughs> Just now I say about once every maybe 20 words. Now it was once every other word. So I'm doing, I'm doing pretty good. Now listen to this. Um, uh, Romans 8, you don't have to turn it, but I want you to read this. Romans 8 14 says this For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Now, now think about that. For, for as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Now, what does that really mean? Because here's a lot of there's a lot of people born again, but they're not being led by the Spirit. Does that mean they're not sons of God? No, what, what I really believe that, that that entails is that when he tells us those that are led by the Spirit are the sons of God, I believe the manifestation of that sonship is seen in our lives. We see the works of God, we hear the words of God, have the thoughts of God, we have the we make the decisions of God. And that is what validates us being sons to the world when they see us making godly decisions and seeing the results of those decisions in our lives. All right, listen. Uh, now, 1 Corinthians 14, 33 says, God is not a God of disorder, but a, but a God of peace. He is not the God of confusion. Now, why do you have all these denominations? Because there's a confusion going on. Amen. Because the word is subjective to people. Amen. Uh -huh. Well, it's the way we believe. 
This is the way we see. But you know, it's not about how you see. It's about what is the Spirit of God trying to reveal. Because the Spirit of God will, will always bring us to a place of oneness and unity. Will he not? Amen. There, there will never be disagreement. Think about this. You think there will be any disagreement in heaven? Of course. Hmm. Why? Because we'll, we'll all be in that one spirit and we'll all be hindered by, by fallen flesh. Amen. There, 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 there will be no problem. You're going to have black heaven, white heaven, and Come Latino on, heaven. Come on, man. It's going to all be heaven. <laughs> right? And so, and so, but we can operate according to that principle down here on earth if we will learn how to be led by his spirit. Mm. And the spirit of God never leads us into confusion and argument and disagreeing mm. and fighting and mm. we're well, right and we're wrong. All that he, he does, mm. he's a God of peace, mm. especially among the saints. Mm. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Now look at James 4, 1. I'm going to, James 4, verse 1 through 3. And I'm going to probably close on this. This, this will be actually, actually be... Y'all doing good. Y'all hung in there with me today. <laughs> James 4, verse 1 through 3. James 4, verse 1 through 3. James chapter 4, verse 1. Here's what it says. He said, what causes fights and quarrels among you? Aren't they caused by the selfish desires that fight to control you? You want what you don't have, so you commit murder. You're determined to have things, but you can't get what you want. You quarrel and fight. You don't have the things you want because you don't pray for them. And when you pray for things, you don't get them because you want them for the wrong reason, for your own pleasure. Mm. That's where confusion comes from. Mm. Anytime you see division in the body of Christ, and so I'm telling you, this, this is going on somewhere in there. Mm -hmm. Because the Spirit of God will always bring us to a place of oneness and unity. Always. And if that's not happening, you know somebody's in the flesh, either both parts or one part, so somebody's in the flesh. Mm -hmm. and when, we get, when we get off course, we must be willing to come back and admit we missed it. Amen. Be open to correction mm. and ready to make whatever adjustment to get back on course. Mm. And a lot of people, and a lot of people uh, in, 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 who have the subjective mindset where the Word of God is concerned, have you noticed you can correct them and show them in the Word and they'll still hold on to what they say they believe, even though they, you prove to them that's wrong? Amen. They're not willing to make adjustments. They're not willing to change their course. Why? What is, what is that indication of? That is indicated that they are not connected or they're not being led by the Spirit. Amen. Listen, many times people change the Word to accommodate a belief that they refuse to change, even when they know the Word doesn't agree with them. And here's the thing about people, y'all. You can always find someone that will tell you what you want to hear. And there's enough of them out there. And the Bible said in the last day they will heap up to themselves teachers having each and years. You can always find somebody that will, allow, that will accommodate your sinful lifestyle mm. and your wrong beliefs. That's why you need to be connected to the Spirit of God so that He can give you revelation and insight concerning the things that you're hearing so you can discern what's right and what's wrong. Amen? Why? Because He knows everything. <laughs> Amen? Amen? Praise God. Okay, let's pray. Hallelujah. Father God, we thank you for the Word, Lord. We just thank you for helping us to recognize your voice in our day-to-day -day lives. Yes. And we pray, Father, that as your people uh, operate uh, in the world, we thank you that, that the sensitivity to the Spirit of God that's on the inside of them will begin to increase. We thank you, Father God, for speaking with, to them with such clarity and such simplicity, Father God, that they would know without a shadow of a doubt that it's you. you. And Lord, we thank you for a heart that is willing to be obedient in the things that you, have, you are speaking to them. And we just want to give you praise, Father. We give you glory for it. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.